It's been a long road since BDI first came to the cloud and we had our traditional environments moving towards going 100% cloud native, which means using Azure Active Directory and cloud-only accounts with FS Logix for all of our cloud BDI solutions like Azure Virtual Desktop, Citrix, and Horizon. And if you've been working with FS Logix in this space, you know this really isn't possible yet. That's just what they want you to think. The closest we've been able to get was using Azure AD joined session hosts with Azure AD Kerberos, but there's been a catch. You still needed your users to be synced, which means you needed a domain controller and Azure AD Connect anyway, so why bother, right? Well, today we're going to come at this problem from a different direction so that you can go 100% cloud native right now. Now, there's a lot of details here to get right, along with some security items we got to talk through. So if you really want to be successful at this, you're going to need to watch this entire video, starting with a huge shout out to Marcel. And he wrote a blog about this solution, and I'll share a link to his blog later. First thing we're going to need here is a storage account. That was easy. Now go to the shares on the left and make sure that you've got a share already set up, which it looks like I need to create one. So I'll just click create at the top. I'll call it FS Logix, make it 100 gigabytes since that's the smallest premium file share you can create, and I'll set the protocol for SMB and hit create at the bottom. Now notice at the top, Active Directory is not configured. And if you click on that, you've got to pick one of three items, Traditional AD, Azure AD Domain Services, or Azure AD Kerberos. And all of those items are going to require your users to be syncing. But today we're going all cloud, so let's get out of here. Now on the left, scroll down to access keys. Now we've got two different keys here, key one and key two, and there is no difference in the level of permissions or access that key one or two are giving you. But it is very helpful when you do key rotation, which is of course another video. So just click the show button for whichever key you want and copy that key. Now RDP directly to one of your session hosts with an admin account, so we're definitely not going through ABD at this point. Click start and type cred, and the best match here should be the credential manager. This is what gives you the experience of being signed in automatically to websites, and it also handles Windows permissions. And that'll help us reach remote resources like our file share. So click to add a new permission, and the network address here is the FQDN of our storage account, which for me is fslogix100cloud.file.core.windows.net. The username here should be in this format, localhost slash, and then put in the name of the storage account, fslogix 100 cloud. The password here is the storage account access key, which you can just paste. And if I open the Windows File Explorer, going to that storage account to my fslogix share that I just created, there it is. So we've got access without any extra permissions. Now we need to get this working for fslogix. So here on the local session host, open the Windows registry and go to HKey Local Machine Software FSLogix Profiles. In here, you should already have a entry for VHD locations or cloud cache, and just set that for our new file share. And of course, you need the enabled key to make this work. Now, there is one additional key that we have never talked about before on this channel, and it's really the magic that makes all of this work. So right click on the white space over here and add a new D word. The name for this is Access Network as Computer Object with no spaces. And the value for this should be set to one. Over in the Azure portal, here's my host pool and I've got three session hosts as you can see. One of them is able to accept connections, the others are in drain mode. So we're all set on this side, let's have a look at our user. Over in Azure Active Directory, here's my users and this user, Cloud, is not a synced user. So he's 100% cloud native only. So opening the AVD client, let's sign in with Cloud and there he's generating a new FSLogix profile. And if we look back at our file share, there is his new profile disk. Cloud native, end to end, no syncing users, 100% Azure native. And because we haven't given any permissions in the share to our cloud user, the file share is safe from any users trying to mess with it. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing to worry about. More on security concerns in a minute. So now that we know that this process works, let's automate it so we can scale it up. Now, if you've been configuring FS Logics using group policies in your traditional environment, those aren't available here in Azure AD native cloud managed stuff. However, I've got something really special for that up my sleeve. And if you're interested, comment below with the words cloud GPO, and I'll make a video on that for you. But for today, there's two things that we have to do. 
Since we can't update our GPO policies in this kind of environment, then we need to update our provisioning templates and scripts so this new storage account credential gets added into our future VMs. And of course, we can use the same script to update our existing systems so that everyone can go all cloud right now. For this script, we're gonna need four input parameters. The storage account name, the name of our share, the user account name that we're using, and the access key. And we can actually pull all of that information right out of our file share. At the top of our file share, go ahead and click the connect button. And then over here on the right, you've got the storage account key option. Make sure that's selected and click show script. Go ahead and click the copy button right there and jump over to your favorite code editor. I'll use VS Code. And now if we run this code, this is gonna test our connection to the storage account. And then it's going to add those credentials to the credential manager like we did a minute ago. And then it's also going to map a drive to the share. So copy the name of the storage account and put it right over here and over here for the username and then put in your share name, which for me is FSLogix, and then go over here and copy the account key, which is pretty long, and then paste it right over here inside the double quotes. Now the credential manager has a command line interface called cmdkey.exe, and we're gonna do a add operation here and then plug in our variables for username and password. While we're at it, let's add all of our FSLogix settings here as well for our registry. So that way everything's in one place. And of course, don't forget to add that access network as computer registry key. When you're done, it should look something like this. Now just run this script on your other existing session hosts remotely or log in or however it is that you do that. And Marcel goes into some cool details how to use his Hydra tool to run that as well. And the link for the blog is in the video description. And that'll get all of your session hosts able to do cloud native 100%, no questions asked, have a nice day. But there's one more important thing we need to consider. Now that I've shown you how this could be done, the question is, should this be done? Now, I always recommend least privilege security, which means people only get the rights that they need to do what they need to do today. Now, this access network as computer registry key will set up permissions in the computer's system context to talk to the file share. But that also means that any local administrators on that VM will have administrator access to the file share. And that also means that anyone who's given the Azure VM contributor or owner access will be able to run this run command out of the VM blade, which gives them permissions to run scripts in the Azure VMs at the system account level as well. So technically they could get to the file share. Now that just doesn't mean at all that you shouldn't do this method but you should always understand who you're giving permissions to and that you're okay with that in your environment. For example, I'd never recommend that users get admin rights in their shared VDI environment. So just to be safe, have a look at all that. And if you're happy, have fun, go all cloud right now. But that's not the end of the story. The product teams are always making improvements and I'll have the latest on all of that when this is baked more into Azure AD, which I know a lot of you are looking for too. So you can catch the next video in the series right over here and happy learning.